Welcome to Biz Today. I'm Nazarene Ibrahim. As you know, every week we saw successful entrepreneurs to get into studio or we find industry experts to talk to us about latest trends or issues or any kind of initiative that can impact your business positively. Or if it's negative, then you need to know what to do about it, right? So this week we're featuring a success story in studio and also that we're celebrating Women's Month. We've got Claudette Sigamani in studio to talk to us about her life and her journey. She's a legal advisor uh, specializing in IR, HR and labor law, as well as a business leader focused on SMME and township development. And her story is quite an interesting one because she's also a full-time single mother to two boys suffering with muscular dystrophy and has a third son. So her story is one that I think you're going to enjoy watching and take away many lessons from. Claudette Tegamani, welcome to Biz Today. Hi, thank you, Ness. <laughs> Lovely to have you in studio. I know it's been uh, quite some time we've been having a lot of conversations <laughs> yeah. to get you into, into studio and finally I'm glad you're here. So I know um, I always try to get in, especially female entrepreneurs, and this is no slight on our male entrepreneurs, but female entrepreneurs who are successful and powerful within their own right. Um, I'm very pleased to say that today we're, we're able to offer the viewers one such example. As ah, well. thank you. So it, your story has inspired me quite a lot because through the years uh, as a legal advisor mm -hmm. specializing in IR, HR and labor relations mm -hmm. and a former vice president of the Durban Chamber, you've led quite an interesting character filled and busy life building a career as a business leader. Yes. How did it all start? It all started, wow, it's been such a journey, eh? Hey? I used to be in a unionized environment. Uh, that's where it started. And uh, doing IR and HR and uh, labor law. And then later on, I uh, obviously, um, if you followed my journey, you'd know that my, my boys have to share muscular dystrophy. And, and I used to work for a corporate. In 2008, I decided to resign from a corporate environment and go on to my own business. Mm -hmm. So, 2009, I started my own business and just doing IR, HR and uh, labor law. And of course, I started going to the SMME uh, side of it in terms of entrepreneurial development, uh, SMME and uh, just mentoring and coaching businesses. And I found myself within the Durban Chamber space. I, I went in as a member and and before you knew it, in 2010, 2011, I became the chairperson of the SMME. And what a phenomenal opportunity it gave me, a platform to get into actual businesses. It showed me exposure that I never needed and or that I wanted to, but I, and I got it by that. Um, I learned a lot about SMME development uh, within that space. So you started out, um, obviously focused, you you got a law degree, yeah. and when you unionized the environment, yeah. you worked specifically and with dedicated focus in that area, so you developed your experience. IR and HR. Exactly. How Mostly IR. Mostly, initially yeah. initially it was IR, uh, being in the unionized environment. Of course, you know, you're you representing at CCMA uh, for, for on behalf of the union. And uh, I tell you, that was the best school I could ever have been at because when you are within the unionized environment, you learn so many things that you never knew. Mm -hmm. I mean, you may, you may have studied and you, um, I mean, I, 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 I studied IR as well and labor law together with HR. But getting that exposure and the experience and on is a different story. So I think what, what I love about your story, you, you started on, on that journey. Yeah. Something in you sparked the idea around business development. And yes, I, the concept of building SMEs. Yes, and growing them to another level. What was it? What so let me just tell you. Is? I went to. I tell you, I was very passionate about SMEs and and entrepreneurial growth. And when I went into the chamber environment, I I, I, I go back to the chamber environment. It was, it was for me, it was a learning growing curve. I learned a lot from within the chamber. Were you a business owner at the time? Yes, I became a business owner. Uh, first time business owner, never knew nothing about business. I used to be the, the type of person that would give my accountant a box with the, with all my slips of paper, you know, because I didn't know how, how else, because when you, when you study, 
You, no one tells you how to run a business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't tell you that you need to have your accounts in order. You need to have, uh, you know, all these things. Just go into business and you say, I want to be, uh, you just you just get up and you say, I want to do this business. But, but being a business owner and an entrepreneur is a risk taker. You take a risk because I, I know from my own personal journey, I took the risk and I left corporate to go into my own space in terms of owning a business. It was it was difficult at the beginning. It was very difficult because you just had one client that I would uh, uh, charge a retainer, and I would do all the work. I travelled a lot. Uh, the business was based in in Bloemfontein and, and Bethlehem and Johannesburg, so I would travel for this client to represent them um, at CCMA, mm -hmm. uh, do the IR, HR, put together their policies, their procedures, help them with. Uh, business expertise as well. So, yeah, I was from a corporate environment, whatever I've learned in the corporate in terms of IR and HR, I now had to implement into a business. And, and, and also, how I got those clients is they knew me in industry. You know, when you work with a corporate, you, you, you get to meet people, you, you sit in various organizations and you, you interact. And I tell you, how my business grew was working in my business and on my business, networking like you never believe, because these networking platforms are the ones that you and I found ourselves in, exactly. and that's how we met. But these are the, four, five, people think it's useless going to these networking things, but it helps so much. The coffee connects, the luncheons, um, but you did something different with that because some people will go to networking sessions and I would promise and come myself up with nothing. Yes, I would promise myself if I had met five people, out of that five people, I must convert that one into a business. And so I would say to them, you know what, um, I, I specialize in IR, HR, and, and, and labor law. Um, and, and, and the thing is, is I complemented my business in such a way where I'd be able to sit in and chair your hearings, I'd be able to put together your policies and your procedures, your disciplinary codes, your entire policy, uh, you know, labor law, uh, disciplinary codes and everything, I would help you to do it. And I put it together in a, in a booklet form and I give it to you if you would have a, an SMME business. Mm -hmm. If you had a corporate business, I would know how to put together that policy and I'll help you and complement you with that. And, and make sure that you don't eradicate the, the, the CCMA. Yeah. So, and your bargaining council. So if you don't have no bargaining council issues, you don't have no CCMA issues, and help your staff, your HR, just be there to assist you with HR. And then that's what happened. I mean, I, I represented companies like, like uh, uh, not represented, companies like KZN Oils became a client of mine. Mm -hmm. It's because of the network that you connect with. Um, and, and KZN Oils was a, was a client that I used, uh, that I was always, they were one of my few clients that I had, and I kept for a long time. Lemon Construction was a big construction company that I was blessed to have. They was my first client. So various companies that came along is because of my networking ability. Also, they knew what I was capable of, and and also sometimes I would represent a uh, a company on the basis of me being. Most of the times I would charge a retainer, but I was always an, a consultant for the company. Sure. So um, not as a legal practitioner, but just as an advisor, a legal advisor. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would I would work with them. And I was like going to the companies like twice or three times, and that's how I did it differently. I was there hands on. I you think that was the defining success for your business in terms of keeping the clients that you had and, and being able to get more clients on board. Because people have unique selling propositions, but it's not always clear. And it's got to be, I think, in your way of doing business. Do you feel that that was your I think, I think for me, it was, that was one doing business, but also people like to do business with people they like. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you, you must have the knowledge, the expertise, and if you have the knowledge and expertise, and if you have, what is it that people like about you? Mm -hmm. People do both personality. You know, people do business with people, they don't ever get fooled and think it's, uh, it works any other way. People do business with people they really? like. If they like you, they're going to do business with you. Mm -hmm. I never think any other, because if I don't like you, I'm not going to do business with you. What's the That's use? I'm not going to. Right. I mean, I don't even like your personality. What am I going to do business with you? Yeah. You know, I I remember 
this is one gentleman that was at the chamber. He was the SMME. Um, the, the, oh, yes. When I first got into the German chamber, I was the HR forum. The HR forum is a special forum within the chamber. Did you? They have multiple forums. Yes. Various. The chamber has a lot of standing committees. And, uh, and one of them was the HR forum. And because I was an expert in HR and IR and, 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 and labor law, per se, and uh, I'm specializing in that. I, and, and I, I started uh, with the chamber when I, was, when I became a chamber member well, while representing a corporate organization. So that's how I got to the chamber, and I knew of the chamber. Mm. And uh, when I became an SMME a year later, I went to the SMME uh, forum. I suppose that was the turning point for you in terms of your I promise you that, is, that was the turning point for me. And I remember the one gentleman that was in the SMME forum, he's still a friend of mine, Dr. Prabhin Thakur. Oh, yes. He, and he said to me, he said to me, so Claudette, how are you going to manage your business? I mean, you're an SMME, you've got competition with lots of corporates, and you specialize in IR and HR and, and labor. How are you going to do this? It's, it's very, going to be very difficult. And um, and then I grew my business. And then he said, wow, I have to give you credit for it. You have grown this business to another level. And, and, I, and I think for me, it was just working in my business and on my business constantly, networking and never ever, nothing stopped me from being successful. What was your, what was the single driving force for making sure that that business succeeded? I had to prove to myself that I was capable of, of making sure the business was sustainable. I gave myself, I, I always give myself um, time to, to, um, to get to a certain level. I how give how myself, old were you when your business went to that level that you were like, okay, I have proved now that it works? Well, I, I tell you this, within three months my business had grown. But I tell you, you, I, you can never do it on your own. Uh, I, I, my business wouldn't have grown. Um, I, I am the former vice president of the chamber, but I tell you this very openly. Um, and I'm not being a member of the chamber. And uh, my network within the the the, the um, and interacting within the the circle of business formations, I wouldn't have grown my business to that level. Mm -hmm. uh, it was that. And it was also uh, people that I found that were enthusiastic about helping me and assisting me. There were lots of people that helped me and assisted me to get to the level that I had got to. I had various mentors and uh, people that offered to mentor me into business. I love that you've picked on so many lessons that entrepreneurs need to understand and take yeah. away. The fact that you may did as much as you could with whatever you had around you. Yeah. You joined a circle, an influential circle, mm -hmm. which is a chamber which anyone can join if they're starting yeah. out a business. And you also acknowledge that you grew your business with people around you. Mm -hmm. People were able to help you to do that. And that I love because those are important lessons for us to remember as entrepreneurs. Absolutely. And when you do if you do that, you get you get so many things right. Hundred percent. When we come back from the break. We will be continuing our conversation with our success story and also entrepreneur of the week, Claudette Sigamani. She's a woman, a power woman sitting in the studio with us. And we're going to talk about her journey now on the more personal front with her family and also how business tied into that. Stay tuned. Mm -hmm.